Hello, and welcome to the next video on trigonometry. So, in this video, I wanted to continue on the topic of radians because it is still a brand new concept and it is a little bit tricky to understand at first. So, I just want to spend some time in this video um, going through radians again and explaining some tips and tricks that you can use to help you solve. Um, conversion problems between radians and degrees a lot easier. Um, I also want to review the main angles in a circle. Understanding these angles is very useful, especially for later on in trigonometry. So what we saw last time in the last video was that um, there is a relationship between degrees and radians. That is, if 360 degrees is one full revolution and 2 pi radians is one full revolution, then it can be established that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. So as stated before, these are both units of measuring an angle. However, just like feet and inches, which both measure distance, they're both two separate units, but at the end of the day, you can find a conversion that relates the two units together. And it's all centered around this relationship. Now again, radians, where radians comes from is one radian is if you have a circle and you wanted to get the angle that that gives you an arc length that has the same length as the radius this angle here is one radian so a lot of people get confused when they see pi and they want to think that whenever pi shows up it's all about radians but that's not necessarily true Yes, it just so happens that pi shows up a lot when we do radians because, again, the relationship between degrees and radians includes 2 pi. But remember, pi is just a number. Pi is approximately 3.14. So, but a radian doesn't have really anything to do with pi per se. One radian, as we see here, is this angle that traces out an arc length of the same length as the radius. So, um, but it just so happens that two pi radians, or which is approximately two times pi, which is a, pro a little bit more than six um, radians, can fit into one full revolution. And that is why that relationship has been established. Now, I also showed how we can convert between um, degrees and radians. Because there's actually a little bit of a simpler relationship which makes these numbers the smallest possible without having to use fractions. And that was if we divided both sides by two, we'd get that 180 degrees is pi radians. So this, it's saying the same thing. 180 degrees is half a revolution and pi radians is half a revolution. So. This here is actually a little bit better to use um, when converting between um, the two units. So the trick is, the fast method to convert between uh, degrees and radians and vice versa. There are two formulas, they're essentially the same thing though. Degrees to radians. So if you're given an angle in degrees and you wanna convert that angle into radians, you're going to multiply by pi radians divided by 180 degrees. This here is what you're going to multiply by, pi divided by 180. And if you wanted to convert from radians to degrees, you get to the angle that you're given in radians and you're going to multiply it by 180 degrees divided by pi radians. And notice what you're multiplying here is almost the same, it's just flipped. Now, my trick to remembering which is which is 
if I'm converting from degrees to radians and I have an angle in degrees, I want the unit degree to cancel out. So notice if 180 degrees is in the denominator, the unit degrees will cancel out. And same thing with radians to degrees. If we want our angle in radians to become degrees, we want the unit radians to cancel out. So I want the pi radians to be in the denominator instead. So knowing this conversion, we can really quickly convert any angle that you're given in either degrees or radians and convert it to its other units of measure. So just to show how easy these conversion formulas are, let's go ahead and do these two problems and you'll see how quick it is to actually convert um, the angles. So I wanna convert 26 degrees to its equivalent angle measure in radians instead. So all I have to do is get 26 degrees and multiply by pi radians divided by 180 degrees. That's all I have to do. Notice the unit degrees cancels and I'm left with 26 pi over 180 radians. Now, however, even though this is correct, you are going to be expected to simplify this as much as possible. So 26 divided by 180 can actually be um, broken down and simplified to 13 pi over 90 radians. And this is the correct angle. So 26 degrees is the same thing as 13 pi over 90 radians. Now, how about converting 3 pi over 5 radians to degrees? So here I'm giving you an angle in terms of radians, but I want the equivalent angle in degrees. So let's see how simple that is. If we have 3 pi over 5 radians and we want to convert it, we multiply by 180 degrees divided by pi radians. Now notice the unit radians cancels. It just so happens in this case that pi cancels as well. So we're left with 3 over 5 times 180, which is equal to 108 degrees. So 108 degrees is the same angle measure as 3 pi over 5 radians. So notice how simple that was to convert. So using the conversion formulas from degrees to radians or radians to degrees, convert these angles to their other unit. So pause the video, try to do these problems on your own, and when you start the video, the answers will be displayed in a few seconds. And there you have it. Here are the solutions to these problems. All you had to do was use the conversion formula. For these cases, you had to multiply by pi over 180. For these cases, you had to multiply by um, 180 divided by pi and you would have got the correct answer. So radians is still a slightly confusing unit. It's a completely new unit that we're still trying to get used to. Degrees, on the other hand, has been something that's been ingrained in us since early childhood. So visualizing an angle in degrees is very easy, but visualizing an angle in radians is a little bit more complicated. But here is a table, and I showed this table in the last video, of very important angles. Technically, there are an infinite amount of angles. However, the easiest way to break down a circle or a full revolution is in these angles. So because these angles show up so many times, 
you can technically convert between the two units using the rules that we've learned before. However, it is actually just a lot easier to memorize these angles and have no problems with them so that easy conversions are doable. Now remember, this is very logical because the angles are related with the established relationship between 360 degrees and two pi radians. These both represent one full revolution in two different units. So half of 360 is 180, therefore half of two pi is pi. Half of 180 is 90, therefore half of pi is pi over two, and so on and so forth. So it's actually very logical um, to figure out these angles. You see 45 degrees is an eighth of a revolution. So two pi divided by eight simplifies to pi over four. Or you could think of 45 degrees as half of 90, so half of pi over two is pi over four. There are many different ways to understand these conversions, but these angles show up a lot in trig. So knowing these angles can allow us to actually very easily convert um, somewhat simple radians into degrees with not much issue. So let's take, for example, this problem here. Let's take, for example, 7 pi over 6 radians. What would this angle be in degrees? So we can either go the long way and do um, the conversion, where we do 7 pi over 6 radians times 180 degrees over pi radians. Notice that the unit radians cancels, the pi cancels, so we're left with 7 over 6 times 180 degrees, which simplifies to 210 degrees. So 7 pi over 6 radians is 210 degrees. However, there is actually an easier way to do this conversion without having to go this step. This, again, if you feel more comfortable doing this, go right ahead. But there's actually a much easier way to convert this angle. So, I know that pi over 6 radians is 30 degrees. So essentially, if I look at this, I see a pi over 6. This here can technically be re rewritten as 7 times pi over 6 radians. So essentially what that's telling us is this angle is 7 times 30 degrees, because pi over 6 radians is 30 degrees. So that means we're moving 30 degrees 7 times. So 7 times 30 degrees is 210 degrees. So you see, if your radian can be referred back to one of these um, important angles, you can very easily convert the radians to degrees. Let's take a look at another example. Let's take um, 5 pi over 4 radians. So I notice here an important angle, pi over 4. Pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So this is essentially telling us that this angle is 5 times pi over 4 radians. And pi over 4 radians is 45 degrees, so this means 5 times 45 degrees, which is 225 degrees. Let's take a look at another. 2 pi over 3 radians. So pi over 3 radians is an important angle. Pi over 3 radians is 60 degrees. You see, it's a third of 180. That's what pi over 3 is telling us, because pi radians is 180 degrees, so a third of 180 is 60 degrees. So this is essentially telling us where this angle is 2 times pi over 3 radians, which is 2 times 60 degrees, which is 120 degrees. 
So 2 pi over 3 radians is 120 degrees. So here are three radians. These here can be converted very easily because they contain one of the important angles. So see if you can determine what the important angle is in each of these radians and determine how you can very quickly convert these radians into degrees. Pause the video, try it on your own, and when you play the video, the answer should show up in a few seconds. And there you have it. These are the angles and degrees that correspond to these angles and radians. Notice for this one, the important angle is 30 degrees. This is essentially saying 8 times pi over 6, and pi over 6 is 30 degrees. So 8 times 30 degrees is 240. This is 3 times 45 degrees, because pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So this essentially means this angle is 3 times pi over 4 radians, or 3 times 45 degrees. It's the same thing, which is 135. And 7 pi is 180 degrees 7 times, because pi radians is 180 degrees. So 7 times 180 is 1260 degrees. Now, how about if we run into angles that do not have any of these important angles? Let's take, for example, an angle like 7 pi over 5 radians. So you could think of this as 7 times pi over 5 radians. However, pi over 5 is not one of these special um, important angles. However, if you think about it, pi over 5 radians, what is that? That is a fifth of pi radians, but pi radians is 180 degrees. So this is essentially a fifth of 180 degrees. So this would be essentially the same thing as 36 degrees. Pi over 5 radians is 36 degrees. So this angle here would end up being 252 degrees. So you see how much faster this was than having to uh, multiply by the formulas that I showed you earlier. This is a little bit faster. Another way to think about this, you could have just thought that this is um, 7 fifths of pi. That's another way to think about it, right? Pi is 180 degrees. So what's 7 fifths of 180 degrees? You see, you would end up with the exact same answer, 252 degrees. So there are so many ways to think about um, radians and how to visualize them in your head a lot better. Again, another way you could have done this is to have used the formulas. You could have um, just gone directly and multiplied by 180 degrees over pi radians. But notice what happens. Radians cancels, pi cancels, and you are left with the same exact thing. 7 over 5 times 180, which is 252 degrees. So there are so many ways to convert um, between degrees and radians. It's however you feel more comfortable with. There are some angles that may seem a little bit intimidating, but again, you can there, if you can find a way to relate the angle and radians to one of these special angles, that would make the calculation a lot faster. So if you don't like this method, you can always just use the two formulas. You can always, if you want to convert from radians to degrees, you would multiply by 180 over pi. This is radians to degrees. Or you could multiply your angle in degrees by pi over 180 and this would give you degrees to radians so there are so many ways to convert and it all boils down to what you feel most comfortable with so take some time memorize this table memorize these conversions between the important angles and also memorize 
the conversion formulas because these might come in handy. So good luck studying and I will see you in the next video.